Welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 77. Before we do, you guys know the drill. Please like the video and leave a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. All right. Given two integers n and k, return all possible combinations of k numbers chosen from the range 1 to n, and you may return the answer in any order. So let's look at a very basic example. We're given that n equals 4 and k equals 2. So basically, we want to find all of the possible combinations of length 2 in the range of 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So these are the numbers we have to work with. We need to generate all the combinations. So this is going to be a classic backtracking problem, and we can kind of visualize the backtracking here uh, tree here. So we essentially start with no combinations, and then what we're going to do is, for the first part, we're going to take a 1, right? So this is going to be a one, and then we could take a two on its own. Uh, we could take two, we could take a three on its own, and we could take a four on its own, right? So from the one, what are the other numbers we have to choose from, right? So we could choose from, you know, two, three, four, because we can't have, um, you know, duplicates here, right? We can't uh, have the same one. So. We, yeah, so basically since we've already chosen one, we can't then choose it again. There's no replacement allowed here. So we could take a two and actually form one, two. Uh, we could take a three and we could form one, three. And we could take a four and basically form one, four. So these are length two. So all three of these are part of the solution here. Now let's see what happens when we actually process the two. So with the two, we could go for a one, three, and four, but notice how it tells us we can return the answer in any order. If we were to take a one, it would be two, one, which is actually the same thing as one, two, just in a different order. So we don't want duplicates, so we're actually not gonna take the, uh, the one here. We're just gonna take the three and the four, because that is a new, unique combination. So we have two, three, and then we also have two, four, right? So since these are length two, which is what we have here with the k equals two, uh, these are actually solutions. Same thing with the three. Again, we're not gonna do one, three, and one, uh, two, three, because we've already basically solved those, so we don't need to do it again. The only unique combination we can make here is three, four, and we're good to go uh, here. So this is of length two, there's nothing else we can make. And then from the four, Actually, we don't need to do anything here because the only combinations we could make are 4, 1. We could make uh, 4, 2 or 4, 3. But you'll notice that these are actually all something that we already have, right? We already have 3, 4 here, just in a different order. We have 2, 4 here and we have 1, 4 here. So we don't actually need to do anything here. So those are all of our combinations. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4 and 3, 4. So there's six total combinations. Now, let's think about how we actually did this because there's actually a pattern here and I wonder if you can see it. So let's kind of erase all of the text we have up until now and think about this. So what we did was we started with no elements and then we basically went from left to right over the array and we took an element, uh, right? So we started with the one and then from the one, what we did was we only considered values to the right of it, right? So we only considered two, three, and four, right? So here we had one, two, which was a solution. We also had one, three, which was a solution. Uh, we have one, four, which is a solution. And those were our ones that we could build. If we had to go further, we could do that. But for now, we don't have to do that anymore. So we did that. And then with two, you'll notice that we didn't go backwards, right? We didn't consider two one because we already considered it with the one, which is a nice uh, unique property. Well, not a unique, but it's just a property of doing backtracking this way that you'll actually get that combination in the prior uh, number, right? So you don't actually need to go backwards. You can only process forwards, right? So here, all we needed to process was the three. Uh, so two, three was a potential solution. And also two, four was a potential solution. And those were our solutions. And the same thing happened for three, right? We don't need to consider things to the left of three in that array because they've already been taken care of here, right? All we needed to do was go to the right of it, right? So we go three, four, and that is it. And then for the four, actually it's the last element in the array and there's nothing to the right of it. So there's nothing for us to actually do there. So we're actually done. So that's what we wanna do is basically at each one, um, 
you know, we will basically just take the element and then in subsequent rows, we'll just go from whatever that index was that we started at and just go to the right of it. So how we're actually going to do this, you'll quickly see in the, um, the actual code editor because it's much easier to explain in actual code. But this is a template that you can basically apply to pretty much all of the backtracking problems because they're all essentially solved in the same way. So let's now go to the code editor and see what that looks like. We talked about the explanation and the intuition for the solution. Now let's actually code it. So the first thing that we're going to need is actually a result list to store our answer here. So let's just say that res is going to be an empty list. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define a DFS function, which is going to basically perform, um, you know, building that kind of tree that we built out for the backtracking. So we're going to say def DFS. And what this DFS function is going to take is our current index, because remember, we need to track the current index where we are in the array, because remember, we only want numbers to the right of it when we're actually building out our combinations, as we saw in the diagram. So we're going to take the current index, we're going to take what our current result is, and we're going to also take, uh, you know, what n is and what k is. So, you know, these are just the variables that are passed to us. So n is the number of numbers we have to work with, and then k is the length of the combination. So that is the DFS. Now let's actually check whether or not we've actually exceeded our bounds here. So we're going to say if the current index is actually greater than n plus 1, uh, and the reason that we do n plus 1 is because the numbers actually start at 1. Uh, they don't start at 0. For some reason, they start at 1 here. So we actually just want to go to n plus 1 to account the fact that basically our numbers aren't, I guess, 0 indexed. So we do that plus 1. If we've actually exceeded uh, the numbers that we want, then we simply just return because our DFS is done. There's no need to keep uh, recursing here. So that is that. Now, if the length of our current result is actually equal to k, then we have a combination of length k, and we can simply add that to our solution. There's no need to go forward anymore. So we're going to say if the length of the current result equals k, which is how long we want it to be, we simply want to say res.append, and then we're going to pass in a list uh, cur res. So essentially what this is going to do is uh, we need to make a copy here because we're working with a recursive function and if we don't make the copy then it's going to affect the value in other um, invocations of this so we need to be careful here and actually pass in the list here so that's what we want to do is basically just add it to our solution and then we can just return because we've now found something with length k so there's no reason for us to actually keep going so we can simply return here now what we need to do is if we haven't um, you know, gone over our length and if we're not at a solution yet, then we actually need to keep processing. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for index in range from whatever the current index is and up until n plus 1, uh, essentially what we want to do is we want to say cur res dot append uh, the current, sorry, the uh, i because that is what re is representing it. So you can think of the current index as like the current number, right? Like we had an array in our example, but that was kind of just for demonstrative purposes. So basically, we're just going to be going from whatever the current number is up until n plus one. And remember, we're always going to the right. So we're going to add whatever the current number is, because that's what you know the i is. And then we're going to call our DFS function. So in the DFS function, obviously, you know, we've now processed i, so we always want to go to the right of it. So we're going to say we're going to pass in i plus one for the current index on the next invocation of the DFS. We're going to pass in the current result and we're going to pass in n and k. Obviously, those stay the same. And once this finishes, uh, it's going to run until we basically find a solution or we kind of exit out. But it's most likely going to exit here uh, when we actually find a solution. Now what we need to do is we actually need to go forward to the next value and you'll notice that we appended our i here but we actually need to get rid of it because now we've fully processed everything under that value right so if we had the numbers like one two three four uh, and then the first i here let's just say it was this one right so when we call add it to our current res it's going to look like one and then we're going to call the dfs on um you know everything to the right of that one and then it's going to populate like one two um you know one three it's going to do one four and then it's going to add those to our result so now when we actually exit out of our dfs 
we don't want this one to be in there, right? Now we want to pretend as if we had started from the two, because remember in the beginning, we had like a one, a two, a three, and then a four, and then we did all the branches under those. So once we fully complete a, um, you know, a traversal with our DFS, we actually need to get rid of uh, whatever the thing we just appended was. So undoing this, so that way we can move forward correctly. So cur res, so we'll just pop that last element that we added. And that is the DFS function. Now all we need to do is simply call our DFS function. So we're gonna say DFS and the current index or the current number, I guess you can think about it, is gonna be one, because that's where we're gonna be starting, right? The numbers start from one and they go up until n. Obviously our current result, we haven't built anything yet, so it's going to be an empty list. N is given to us, K is given to us. So that is the DFS call, and then all we need to do at the end is simply return res. So I just wanna run this, make sure I haven't made any stupid mistakes. And okay, it looks like it's fine there. Let us now submit this and double check that it works. Okay, cool, it was accepted, all right, nice. What is the time and space complexity of our algorithm here? So let's think about this. To actually uh, you know, add this part to the solution, it's gonna cost us length k, uh, k time, right? Because there's k elements in cur res, because that's the item that we're looking for. And calling list on a basically a list of k elements is gonna take big O of k time, right? So that portion is big O of k, and we do this for every single combination that we generate. So how many combinations are there? Well, if you remember from math, uh, we basically, when you have n items and you wanna choose k, that is n choose k items, which can actually be simplified um, down to, let me actually pull up the formula here because I don't remember it off the top of my head. So this is actually gonna be n factorial divided by, and on the denominator is gonna be n minus k factorial times um, k factorial. So this is the total number of combinations that you're gonna generate uh, multiplied by O of k, where k is, this is the actual making of the list. So this is how long it's gonna take to actually build all of the combinations, and then it's gonna take O of k to actually make that list for each one. So our final time complexity is you know this it's going to be big o of k times big o of n choose k which is i guess k times whatever the the answer here is right it's that complex mathematical formula so that is the actual time complexity uh pretty tricky one although i guess if you know the the combinations formula it's not too bad but I mean, intuitively, you have the O of K, which is coming from this list call, and then you, this is the amount of combinations that you have to generate. So um, yeah, pretty straightforward on that one. For the space complexity, obviously the result is going to be dependent on the number of combinations we have. So the space complexity here is just gonna be N choose K, right? So we have to store all of the combinations. So the amount of combinations we need to store is dependent on N choose K, right? So it depends on how large N and K are. So that is how you solve combinations. Like I said, this basically pattern of doing, um, backtracking is applicable to pretty much all the backtracking problems what you actually do in this loop here or how you actually do the solution is where they kind of uh, vary a little bit but this template can be ap applied to basically all uh, backtracking problems you just have to tweak it slightly but this is essentially the template that you want to use for every single backtracking question so Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something about backtracking. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It helps me so much with the YouTube algorithm. If you wanna see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And I also have a Discord channel if you wanna talk about all things Fang, uh, leak code preparation, system design, if you want your resume to be reviewed by me, um, if you want referrals for Fang companies, all that stuff, join the Discord. I'll leave a link in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.